You're watching the new Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. Millions of developers use Docker to build, share, and run applications with an integrated, reliable, and secure workflow that accelerates app delivery from code to the cloud. See how at docker.com. Insight Partners is an investor in Docker and TNS. Hello, I'm Lorraine Lawson, reporter with the News Stack. Today we're talking about the 800-pound gorilla in the room, artificial intelligence. Our guest today is Justin Cormack, CTO of Docker. Justin, welcome. Nice to be here with you. Yes, yeah, so Docker has several big announcements this week at DockerCon centered around generative AI. Um, you're seeing a lot of interest too in large language models from developers. Can you talk about that a bit? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that you know AI and ML have been you know been around for quite a while now, and lots of people have been using Docker for AI ML over the years. But it's been a very you know it's been a very specialized niche area for a long time. You know, it's been data scientists building building models. You know, often for um, image processing or um, you know, uh, you know, prediction like um, ad serving, all those kind of internal applications. And it's been um, you know, and then many of them use Docker for this. It's very common to, to deploy using Docker and build using Docker. But that's been a very niche market, really. Um, you know, it's been a very it's been an important area for a lot of people working on it, but it's not something that other people really tended to care about much. It was very compartmentalized in a, you know, in a data science department usually. And then suddenly last year, when OpenAI released you know, ChatGPT, it suddenly where everyone was talking about it. Everyone was excited. It's like, hold on, this can do things. Um, you know, we, um, you know, people. And developers got their hands on, you know, things like GitHub Copilot, and they were like, "Okay, this is useful. This is doing stuff for me. This is helping me be productive. Think what it could do in the future." What, you know? And people really got excited about, like, what could I build with this? Um, and and the field obviously has been moving really fast. You know, there's been a huge amount of innovation. A huge number of companies have brought out new open source projects and products and um, tools and um, Facebook started releasing open source models. So <laughs> like, there's been a massive explosion of interest. And, um, you know, so we we really, you know, people were asking us like, how do I get started with this stuff? You know, can you make this experience and easy? That, yeah, and that's part of your announcement this yeah. week is how you're going to do that. So what are you going to do? Yeah, so we, we you know, we decided to really partner up with the ecosystem to do this. You know, it's, everyone is working on this, these stacks together. So we um, we put together a you know a, a simple get started you know, but something that's a real example. That's like the the kind of stack that people are using. So it's what's called a um, a rag stack. It's for where you take um, a language model and rather than just say you know chatting with it, chatting with OpenAI. You add your own custom data in it, so it can ask, answer questions about your specific domain that you're interested in, and it doesn't just say, "Sorry, I don't know anything about that." That was, uh, you know, <laughs> I could make something up for you. Instead of doing that, you can actually feed in your own data, and that's become a very popular pattern. So we teamed up with a bunch of companies. We teamed up with um, Alama, who are a company who specialise in making models, especially local models around the, the Facebook Llama ones that you can run locally on your laptop because um, a lot of people to get started and want to run it locally and have a local experience and don't want to have to you know necessarily sign up to open AI and pay for the API access or something it's much simpler to just get started locally and a lot of people are really excited about what you can deliver locally as well because um, there's a big GPU shortage it's hard to <laughs> build applications sometimes that are not you know, in the cloud with GPUs. So local, lots of people are really excited about local. And then we, we teamed up with Neo4j, who's a um, graph database company. has been around for a long time. We've known, known, them, known them for ages. They're, they've added extensions to support um, the vector database st stuff, which is where, how you store, um, store extra data for retrieval by the LLM. Um, 
and then we teamed up with Langchain, which is really the most popular framework for working with LLMs and um, building out a framework and tooling to understand, you know, to chain answers and questions together, feed the, you know, build the pipeline for it, um, and have the observability to understand what's going on, how you work with that and debug that. So we brought all this together with um, Docker Compose, and you can get it right in the learning center on the latest version of Docker Desktop, so you can just one click and bring up the stack and then start iterating, experimenting, change the code, build your own code, feed your own data source in. We've, just for the example, we just made a trial, you know, just a simple app where we take um, questions from Stack Overflow, and so you can choose which questions from Stack Overflow to put in, because it's kind of similar to the sort of internal knowledge base you might have. You know, it's just a, a bunch of questions that answer something that the uh, chatbot can't necessarily answer on its own, so you can ask it questions about a specific domain on Stack Overflow um, that it might not know. That it might not know about otherwise something you know like if there's a new technology that's or a niche area you feed in all these questions and it will use those to actually answer in more in a lot of detail and give you citations and references to that and you can feed in any, any kind of data you want and extend this model however you like from that so it's a pre-trained model yes well, there's there's a there's a pre you can use um, you know, Llama or OpenAI is the pre-trained bit, but you get to extend it with your own data as well. So it's it, it's adding that extra data layer on top of the uh, the existing model to extend its abilities. Yeah, that seems like the going trend, so that yeah. people can have their data in-house and so have their pie and eat it too. I guess. Well, yeah, I mean, people have a you know, the, the in-house data is what you really want to use to really build on your own problem domain and. Lots of this data is not public, and you know it's not part of the training set for any of these models. It's um, something that's related to the domain that you work in, um, and the things that you know you you understand, and you don't, and, and you have that in house. And lots and lots of customers we talk to are building things along these lines in a huge number of different domains, different areas, and you know having real success in doing this. Um. So you have another announcement about how Docker is using AI to solve developer problems. Uh, what's that, and how does it work? Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of comes back to the, you know, bringing your own domain expertise. You know, we've been building Docker for 10 years, and we have a really good understanding and data about, like, where people have problems with, Do with Docker, how, you know, whether they're beginners or advanced. Like, there's all sorts of different things. You know, we, we have a lot of feedback. You know, you... you you kind of think, you know, if you, you know, after 10 years, everyone knows how to do Docker, but of course, it's like totally not true. Like every day, there's thousands and thousands of new people coming to Docker who've never used it before and don't know where to get started. They, you know, they've heard about it from their team and they want to Dockerize their application and, you know, deploy to the cloud. And they're like, it's like, how do, where do I start? And, um, you know, it, We've had this big ramp up to, you know, tens of millions of developers, and you know, a lot of them are very new still, and even experienced developers, you know, there's there's hard things that they don't know how to do, and we can help them. So we decided that we take we take this experience we have and build a tool, um, you know, using LLMs and other other pieces of tech, um, you know, to really help you. And so it's it's structured. It's actually a um, interactive notebook in Visual Studio Code. Um, other editors in future, but it's, um, it's it's designed so that you can interactively, you know, it can it can give you suggestions about what you might want to do. It can look at your application and it can um, see what kind of application it is, what language you're using, and tell you like help you write a docker file for that and it can help you write a compose file help you get started work out what's going wrong if it's not working if you you know give you hints and about things that you might want to change or update or how to improve things so it's um, really designed for you know n not just for beginners but it's a lot of there, there's a lot of focus on you know the get started flow and what we've learned about how people want to get started and we're going to be there's a um, there's an early access program starting shortly so that people we can get 
more feedback about how people how people are using it and, and if we've got the right kinds of questions and things, but we're going to be rolling it out. You know, we're starting the early access program really soon. We've been using it internally. It's been, um, been really improving rapidly. And what do they think about it internally? Was it popular? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, it's people are people are really excited. And it's like it's the you know it's a nice. Um, it has a very interactive feel, and it's very um, you know kind of you know you can just run your Docker commands, and it'll tell you about what's going on in the errors and what's. And so it's very feels very helpful. Oh, nice. And you're also optimizing hardware so that developers developers can run AI applications. Yeah, well, yeah. So this is something that we're, we're it's very early stages, but we're quite excited by this. We've been you know, one of the problems people have told us is that you know they want to run these applications locally. Um, you know, the, the, all the excitement about Llama and so on. It's been very you know it's been something people want to do, but the you know and everyone's got really powerful you know shiny new Mac laptops that they're very, you know, developers love them. That's why, you know, they love running applications, you know, development locally because they've got such powerful machines now. But before there hasn't been a way you could use your local GPU in your laptop in your, from a Docker container to actually run accelerated applications. And so that's what we're, we're working on using this new standard called WebGPU that actually came out for the browser and it's shipping in Chrome now and it's about shipping Firefox and other browsers coming soon. But it's not actually just a web stack at all. It's actually something that you can run um, for other applications. So we're integrating that into Docker Desktop so that you can get hardware acceleration inside your container on any laptop. It doesn't, it, it's, a, it's a really early stage, and our demo is just a you know, very, very early stage, just kind of doing a little bit of matrix multiplication, which is the underlying basis. We haven't got a full LLM running yet, but we're working on that. And Cloudflare did an announcement that they're going to support it on Cloudflare workers uh, last week as well. So it's, I think we're seeing a bit of momentum in the in industry towards using WebGPU for doing different things. And we're seeing, um, you know, we're seeing that a bunch of the um, ML frameworks starting to support it. So there's one called Burn, Rust framework, which is really cool. They're, they're supporting it. We're working with them. Um, so we're, you know, we're looking to roll this out uh, so that. You know, the, it adds to that kind of, you know, the hardware support side of the accelerator side of things that's so important for AI applications, but bringing that to the developer, because at the moment it's, you know, you can use, you know, we have lots of support for NVIDIA on servers, but not for support on, on laptops and Windows and Mac, and especially where people, the developers have the machines and making that portable is really exciting. So that that's coming, but the uh, generative AI tool um, that's out right now. That's out yeah. already. Yeah. yeah, and using it. All right. Well, thank you, Justin, so much for talking with us today, and thank you for staying with us at the News Stack. Thank you. Been good to be here. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.